The question is that the motion be agreed to. The member for Fraser. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Uh, debt is not the most serious issue that developing countries face, but unsustainable debt burdens can, in certain cases, uh, be a barrier to development. So the HIPAA initiative was launched in 1996 by the IMF and the World Bank, and its aim is to ensure that no poor country faces a debt burden that it can't manage. Uh, HIPIC uh, has a, a two-step process. Uh, the decision point requires that uh, countries be eligible to borrow from the World Bank's International Development Agency, face an unsustainable debt burden, have established a track record of reform and sound policies, and have a poverty reduction strategy paper. Uh, of the 39 countries that are eligible or potentially eligible for the HIPIC initiative assistance, 32 are receiving full debt relief from the IMF and other creditors after reaching their completion points. Uh, we know that uh, debt relief has, for these countries, freed up resources for social spending. Uh, before the HIPIC initiative, eligible countries were spending a little more on debt service than on health and education combined. Uh, now their expenditure, expenditure on health, education and social services has gone up and averages five times what they spend on debt payment. Um, for the 36 countries that have debt relief, uh, debt service paid on average has declined about two percentage points of GDP uh, over the course uh, of the noughties. Uh, and, uh, and so the HIPIC initiative has been successful. Uh, I think it is important that in considering any issue of debt relief, uh, that we bear in mind uh, the purpose for which debt is acquired. Uh, debt is not of itself uh, a bad thing, uh, just as we wouldn't want to shut off credit markets to low-income Australians, so too we want to make sure that any reforms in the area of debt uh, don't shut off the access to credit uh, for uh, uh, well-managed developing, developing country borrowers. Uh, in fact, what is particularly uh, striking in the world is that uh, more finance is not flowing to the world's uh, poorest countries. Uh, the return on capital ought to be highest uh, for countries that are furthest behind the world average incomes, uh, and yet it's proven difficult uh, to attract investors uh, into these countries. Um, the concept that I find most attractive in this space is uh, Michael Kremer and Seema Jayachandran's notion of odious debt. Uh, odious debt they define as sovereign debt that's incurred without the consent of the people and not for their benefit. Uh, they give the example of debt incurred by apartheid era South Africa and they argue that that debt shouldn't be transferable to successor governments. Uh, they argue that uh, if w uh, the development of an institution uh, that could truthfully announce whether regimes were odious uh, could create a, an equilibrium in which uh, donors have a strong incentive not to loan to, uh, to odious uh, countries, but in which uh, uh, regi regimes in low-income countries that are spending uh, borrow borrowings for the advantage of their people can still obtain access uh, to credit markets. Uh, to me, the notion of odious debt is particularly attractive because it focuses on how the money is spent rather than how much uh, money is, uh, is, is acquired. Uh, and I would uh, uh, urge the House to, uh, to, to do what we can to pursue the notion of odious debt uh, and urge the government to, uh, to, to favour odious debt. Now, of course, the big shift since the creation of the HIPIC initiative has been the rise of China as a, as a donor. Uh, this is transforming uh, foreign, uh, overseas direct, uh, direct assistance. Uh, China currently operating largely outside the OECD DAC framework means that it is difficult for other countries to know what aid China is providing and to work in uh, with that aid. Uh, so anything that, uh, that we are doing in the space of uh, odious debt, vulture funds uh, or the HIPIC initiative uh, needs to take into account uh, how the Chinese government will, resp will respond uh, and to, to the extent we can to bring China into the community of nations uh, that believes that overseas aid should be used to pursue the well-being, further the well-being uh, of individuals uh, rather than simply uh, regimes uh, and leaders.